Hi, my name is Martin Püker and in this video I would like to show you what parametric anatomical modeling is about. And I would like to start with um, the kind of end result that I had in mind when I developed PAM. Um, namely, 3D anatomical models of, for example, the Red campus, which I can use to create artificial neural networks, which I can then analyze, for example, using Nest or any other neural network library. The basic idea is that uh, we trace the a neural and synaptic layer of, of the structure that we would like to model. So in this case the hippocampus um, of the rat. And as you can see here we have CA1, uh, CA3, dental gyrus, um, subiculum and one superficial and one deep layer of entorhinal cortex. And then using a set of mapping techniques we can relate those layers with each other to describe how neurons from one layer, for example the superficial layer of entorhinal cortex, map on dental gyrus, CA3, CA1 and so on. Um, after that we can create the artificial neural network that we can simulate in any other kind of environment, but we can also visualize those data. So for example a more dorsal neuron on the entorhinal cortex maps to more septal part of the hippocampus and more ventral uh, neurons map to more temporal parts. Now don't take the exact um, projections of the axons here for granted, they are prob probably wrong. The point is that uh, technically we can define them correctly once we know how they really look like. So there are some intermediate layers which I show in a minute uh, which define how those neurons uh, project in space um, through the target regions. Um, let's have a look at, for example, CA3 neurons. Um, also here we can um, define how they project to their, to their own neuron group and also via the Schaeffer collaterals to, to CA1. And we can really define how those axons go in space uh, below the CA1 layer and then form synapses. On CA1, for example, we know that more proximal neurons project to more distal neurons on the subiculum and vice versa. And yeah, we, we can also model this. And in this particular example, I would like to show you the intermediate layers. So for CA1, which is this layer here, I created um, a second layer which basically covers whole CA1 and um, a synaptic layer which covers the subiculum. And um, this second intermediate layer is basically a mirrored version of this layer and um, I simply deformed it in space so that it covers uh, the whole subiculum. And then using a set of mapping techniques, which you can see here in the code, I describe the whole, um, yeah, the whole connection list. So I start with CA1, the presynaptic neuron uh, layer, then the two intermediate layers and the target region. And then I say that um, there is a topologically equivalence between uh, the presynaptic layer and the first intermediate layer. Um, and yeah, I basically describe the whole trajectory and how, how neurons should be mapped from one layer to the next layer. And using a set of 2D functions, I can determine the probability uh, between uh, uh, pre and post synaptic neurons that they form connections. Um, to give you a better understanding of how that all works, I created a toy example in which we can go through the details. So here you see a presynaptic layer and a postsynaptic layer and this orange layer here should be my synaptic layer. And um, the definition of the connection includes the whole list of, um, of layers including the intermediate layers which basically describe how the projections um, should look like in space. Then I describe or I I define which uh, neuron group I would like to use. Obviously, uh, any kind of layer can host several types of neurons. Uh, this number here determines which is my presynaptic layer, which is the fifth one, uh, starting with zero. So one, two, three, four, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this layer, which is this one here, is my synaptic layer. And then I use uh, the mapping commands and distance computation commands to describe how the connections should look like and how the how the distance between neurons are defined. Uh, to give you a, uh, uh, an idea of, of how this matters, um, I, I will change one of those commands. For example, this one here, 
which basically defines the mapping between this layer and this layer. Um, when I switch to normal mapping, I use simply the normal to jump from this layer to this layer and thereby all the synapses will be around this target region here. However, since this layer here is a copy of this layer, so it has the same internal mesh topology, I can easily map any point from on this layer on any point on this layer. And this is what I basically do with the um, map top command, which then results in um, yeah, in other projections where the more dorsal part of this layer also maps to, yeah, it could be, for example, some kind of septal part, if this is some kind of rough model of the hippocampus, um, yeah, on this layer. Um, then we have a list of commands which define how the distance should be computed. And in this particular example here, for example, um, I define that the um, projection should go along uh, the surface um, and one alternative to this would be to simply compute the Euclidean distance. When I execute this, then you will see that the connections from this layer go directly to the synapse, to the synapses which are on the orange layer. This is, uh, for example, um, a realistic way um, for mappings between those layers which simply define how the projections in space look like but in this particular case I wanted this uh, normal v, normal UV mapping to to uh, model the axonal projections along the surface and this is something f which I for example used in the CA3, CA1 mapping in my campus model. One feature that I use here, which is um, actually common to all 3D environments, is the fact that I can unwarp any kind of 3D surface into 2D space and therefore use either the global axis or the local axis of a surface to determine neuron properties or connection properties. I also can include um, external experimental data to determine, for example, the density of the of the neurons on the surface. For example, when I increase here the number of neurons, I can use um, any kind of texture which I could, for example, obtain from from tracer studies to define where neurons should be placed and and where not. And this could be, for example, interesting for the interrunal cortex. So this is just a very short introduction to show you what is uh, what parametric anatomic modeling is about and in other videos I will go into more detail about how this all works.